Hey guys, welcome back to my Linux Mint series. And in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the Linux Mint desktop to help you get more familiar with your new operating system. So let's go ahead and check it out. So continuing where we left off from the first video where we installed this, now we have the welcome screen that appears when you first log in. We have several different sections here on the left-hand side. So if I click on first steps, we have a couple of things that we can do. I'm not gonna show you too many of these in this video because they'll have their own, but basically we can check out the driver manager, system snapshots, multimedia codecs. There's a lot of different things that we can choose here. And go ahead and take a look at these different things on your side and feel free to explore, but we'll cover these things in a different video. So then we also have a link to documentation here. We could check out the release notes for the current version. Um, what the new features are and so on. There's a section here for basically how to get assistance. So there's a link to the web forum and also an IRC chat room. And then of course you can contribute. The Linux Mint community accepts donations. I mean, this distribution is free. You didn't pay anything for it, but if this is of value to you and you find that you like it, please donate because you know, hosting a distribution is not cheap. It's an expensive thing. Um, they have a lot of volunteers that work really hard on this. So just make sure you send a few dollars their way. If uh, you know you find Linux Mint useful, I just think it's great to help the community. And if you don't have extra money, there's other ways of helping. I did do a video on my channel that goes over some very easy ways that you can contribute back to the Linux community. So I'll go ahead and close this for now. And let's take a look around. So. We have some desktop icons here. We have home and we have computer. So computer is where you would go to check out the devices that are installed. So if you plug in a flash drive, which I'll just go ahead and do right now, you should see it actually show up there. And this flash drive is the same flash drive that we used for the installation. So it's a Linux Mint installation. It's not something I would save files to, but you can see that it actually showed up here. And I'll go ahead and uh, click the eject button, which is how you remove a device safely, which will allow me to remove it from the system. So basically that's what computer is. And then we have home. If I click on that, we have some default folders. Now, obviously I don't have anything here if I click on any of these, but this is your place to store any of your personal files. Now the home folder is very important in Linux. It's every Linux distribution users by default get a home directory. And that's for you again, to put your personal files. You have full ownership over that. So you can uh, have full access. You can delete the default folders it came with. Uh, probably shouldn't, but you could. Uh, you could add new files and what have you. So basically we have a default folder for music, pictures, videos, and so on. And then if you want to share with a Windows device, for example, if, if there's a network share, you can click on network and then maybe you'll see some file shares. And we do have some file shares here on this network already that uh, showed up. It automatically detected those. We have the trash folder for deleted items. So if you delete something, that's where it will go by default. And um, you know the desktop folder, which is actually part of home. If you create something here, like if I create a new folder, you can see I created it here, it shows up here. So anything you put in your desktop folder will show up and vice versa. So if I move this to the trash, you can see that it's gone and now it's in the trash. And I can empty the trash just like you would in any other OS. On the bottom left corner, we have a, you know, what's equivalent to a start menu, but it's just called menu. This is where your applications are broken down by category. You have accessories, graphics, internet, and so on. So for internet, we have Firefox as our default web browser. We also have a Firefox icon down here on the bottom. So this is just basically the same web browser I was already using. So if I go to my website here, you'll see that it works just fine. And if you're not on the network already, you just basically click on this little icon down here at the bottom to select your wireless network. But basically you can see I'm on my website, so I know that that's working. So that's the default web browser. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, guys. But before we do, I just wanted to quickly mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers and their cloud manager dashboard makes it extremely easy to set up your own Linux server in seconds. Whether you like Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is, you can have your very own Linux server running your favorite distribution in a geographic location near you with the latest one just recently introduced in Toronto. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linux server. So go ahead and check that out and let's get right back to the video. 
We also have a terminal icon here, which, you know, if you're a beginner, you'll never need this. You really shouldn't use this unless you absolutely have to. And I feel like I should explain that comment. I'm a terminal person myself. I love command scripting, all that. I even did like entire series on Linux commands. So by no means am I saying you should never use Linux, Linux commands, but this series is for beginners. So probably you won't get into that. What you will find a lot of times is some people will recommend terminal commands when you look up uh, how to do something in Linux. Um, it gives a false impression that you need the terminal. You don't, it's just people like the terminal more, but everything you can do uh, on your machine or you need to do, you can do with a graphical user interface. You don't actually need the terminal. So I don't even know why they include it in the panel, to be honest. I don't even think they should. It's kind of misleading. It's kind of like they're telling you, hey, you're gonna need the terminal sometimes. No, you don't. Um, you can use it for scripting and doing different things, especially if you're doing development work, sysadmin stuff, if you're a DevOps person, that kind of thing. You probably need the terminal for like, you know, getting that kind of work done. But for day-to-day -day usage of your machine, no, you don't need it. So I'll go ahead and close this. I'm not gonna go over uh, too many Linux commands. I probably will touch on it a bit in this series at some point, but I do have an entire video series on that. Then we have an icon right here for files, which I've already showed you. Then on the bottom right corner, we have the clock. We could click on that to see the calendar. We have a battery display. If you have one on your machine, your audio controls are here. I've already gone over the Wi-Fi. If you have a Bluetooth chip in your machine, you could click on that and basically add devices, which I don't have anything with me. And then we have the update manager right here, which I'm not gonna go over in this video. So at this point, you can just go through and see some of the default applications. So you have simple scan for scanning documents if you have a scanner, GNU image manipulation program. It's actually just called GIMP is, is what everyone refers to it as, the, the you know abbreviation of that. You see GIMP is listed right there. It's basically for your Photoshop needs. It's what I use to edit all of the thumbnails of every video on my channel. I'm not a graphics designer by any means, but you can see you can get the job done there. So I'll go ahead and close out of there. And what else do we have here? So for Office, we have LibreOffice Writer. So I'll bring that up and it is a very good Office suite. You have your Writer, which is like Microsoft Word. And then of course you have other applications like you have the Calc, which is its equivalent of Excel. And then you also have Impress, which is basically like PowerPoint. So you have all this out of the box. I didn't install any of these. You get all of these apps with uh, Linux Mint by default, which is just awesome. And uh, I will say that the LibreOffice suite of applications is actually really good. I mean, I wrote four books with LibreOffice. All four of my books, professionally published, were written, written with LibreOffice. So if anyone ever tells you that LibreOffice isn't good enough, or it's not as good as Microsoft Office, it's ob you know absolutely not true. It's definitely great. Maybe the people that say that just don't know how to use it. They're just more efficient with Word because they've been using that more often. But if you can write four professionally published books with LibreOffice, I think that proves that it's very useful. So um, definitely keep that in mind. The only thing with LibreOffice to keep in mind is if you are going to be sharing the document with people that use Microsoft Office, we need to go File, Save As, make sure you choose a format that the other person is able to use and you have all these different formats here. So this isn't a tutorial on how to do document management or anything like that, but just de definitely wanted to uh, mention that. So uh, again, you just go through these applications and you see that there's default applications for everything, even printers, you can install your printers and so on. So um, with that said, I think that's pretty much it for this video. And I really appreciate you watching guys. Um, at this point, the goal for you is just to familiarize yourself with the new operating system, open some applications, check them out, go online, browse some websites, just get familiar with it. And then once you're familiar with it, I will see you in the next video, which actually should already be up on my channel. So I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you wanna help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video, where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.